this time on Inside Roan State. Students start the financial aid process. We go behind the scenes at CNN. And we salute our community's veterans. This is Inside Roan State for January 2013. Spring semester classes begin Thursday, January 17th at Roan State Community College. President Dr. Chris Whaley shares some tips to ensure student success in the spring semester. Number one, to make sure to meet with their advisor and to have that academic plan in place. It's, it's, it's imperative for students to know where they are in that academic plan, what they have left in order to finish their degree or certificate, whatever the case may be. And the academic advisor, their faculty uh, advisor, is someone who knows sp specifically not only how to help them uh, make the best progress on that plan, uh, but also then to counsel them on any transfer plans or career options that they, things that they may have questions about in, in, in those areas. So to meet with an advisor, I think, is, is the, the, the primary uh, thing of importance. Um, also, uh, to make sure that as the semester starts to get off to a good start. Uh, if, an, if an instructor assigns um, uh, reading, uh, I mean it, it sounds uh, almost uh, too simple, it's too simplistic to say, but it, it really rings true. If they assign a reading assignment, read the assignment, keep up, uh, stay on track. Dr. Whaley encourages students to ask instructors for help whenever assistance is needed, and students are welcome to take advantage of other resources, such as the Learning Center for Academic Help and the sales program, including the COLS 1010 course, for help learning good habits for studying and staying organized. And I think the third thing is student engagement. I know our students are busy. Many of them have jobs, maybe even more than one job, and family obligations, but if there is any way for the student to get engaged with a student organization, with uh, one of our clubs or, uh, uh, you know, in athletics or intramurals or the theater or music department or with Channel 15, those are ways to get engaged and students who are engaged, statistics clearly show, have a high degree of success. Uh, it, it's important, it matters, and so we want students to, uh, to have those opportunities and to, and to take advantage of them. Roan State is offering extended business hours in January to help students get ready for the start of spring classes. Extended hours for the Roan County and Oak Ridge campuses will be Saturday, January 12th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday, January 14th through Thursday, January 17th, and Tuesday, January 22nd and Wednesday, January 23rd, 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. each day. The Roan County and Oak Ridge campuses will maintain usual business hours, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on Fridays. The Campbell, Fentress, Loudoun, and Morgan campuses are usually on a Monday through Thursday schedule. From January 2nd until January 18th, they will also be open on Fridays, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. local time. The Cumberland and Scott campuses will operate on their normal schedule, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. local time, Monday through Friday. This is the schedule for the 2013 spring semester. It's available at roanstate.edu. All dates are for the full term. Deadlines and key dates for accelerated terms, seven-week classes and ten-week classes are different. Visit roanstate.edu to view calendars for those terms. Faculty report on January 10th. The last day for a 100% refund for the full term and the last day to register for spring classes is January 16th. Full term classes begin Thursday, January 17th. Classes will not meet, and Roan State's offices will be closed on Monday, January 21st, the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. The last day to drop a full-term course or withdraw without a grade of W is January 30th. Spring break is scheduled for March 11th through 17th. Classes will not meet, and Roan State's offices will be closed on March 29th, the Good Friday holiday. The last day to withdraw from full-term classes, as well as the last day to change from credit to audit, is March 30th. The last day of full-term classes for the spring semester is Monday, May 6th, and the examination period follows, Tuesday through Thursday, May 7th through 9th. Graduation ceremonies are slated for Friday and Saturday, May 10th and 11th. For more information, including schedule details for accelerated classes, go to roanstate.edu. It's time for students to file FAFSA applications for the 2013-2014 academic year. FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. 
It's the first step in applying for grants, some scholarships, student loans, and the work-study program. Students right now need to know that the FAFSA is available beginning January 1st for the 2013-14 school year. They need to file early in January, as soon after January 1st as they can. Of course, they won't have their tax information completed, so they need to estimate. And then they'll have to go back into their FAFSA and do the IRS data retrieval. If they have questions about completing the FAFSA or just financial aid in general, they can come here or to any local campus. And folks, we've had training on how to help them complete the FAFSA. We're going to have um, FAFSA filing days in January. I'm going out to local high schools. We're going to have things at the Rome County campus and the Oak Ridge campus to help students file the FAFSA because we want them to file it correctly to start with so that there's less time on the end. Long said students should remember that more steps follow filing the FAFSA. Don't file your FAFSA and then forget about the rest of your financial aid requirements, she said. Just make certain that you complete the file early. So you do the FAFSA, you go back in and put your tax information there, and then anything else we need, you need to be proactive and check with us and say what else is needed to complete my file, because that should be done, I would say, no later than June, just to keep you, you know, so that your financial aid is available when fees are due. Dr. Chris Whaley assumed the presidency of Roan State Community College effective November 1, 2012. He said he's had a busy few months, but is settling in just fine. Well, I, I've kidded everyone that if, if, if my eyes look a little bit glazed over, it's because my head has been spinning a little bit. A, a good spin, but it's been spinning, and it's really been a joy. Um, I don't think anything can quite prepare you for the, the onslaught of interest and that is not a negative thing at all because to me overall it's not interest in me personally, it's interest in Roan State and the students and the faculty and the staff and the great things that are going on here. Dr. Whaley has attended several receptions for school, community and business leaders in each of the counties that Roan State serves. What I have tried to convey to everyone is that I want to be a resource for them. I want folks to know that Roan State uh, is the community college in all of these areas. Uh, again, since we do not have a university located within our service area, Roan State is the hometown college. So if we're talking about credit education, if we're talking about non-credit workforce training, if we're talking about partnerships with local communities and, and different projects that they have going on, I just want folks to be able to get to know me, to feel comfortable contacting me with questions and issues and to be able to reach out to me in reaching out to Roan State as a resource for things that they need. Well, we're pleased that he's, that he's earned this opportunity. Roan State Community College and any community college is front and center of what our community needs to do to attract new jobs, train a, a more skilled and talented workforce, and, and further the educational attainment in the community, where, where a great opportunity for Chris is He's a fixture already in place. He's got a reputation. He's got uh, a strong track record. And so we're not going to have to stop in, 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 in this community college and hold our breath while the new guy catches up. We just got to hang on to him and see how fast he'll run. So we're pleased to play some small part in welcoming him. Teams are now being recruited for Roan County's Relay for Life, coming up April 19th and 20th on Roan State's main campus. The Relay, if you've never been to the Relay before, we actually put luminaries out along a walking track, and uh, team members will walk along the track all night long. Uh, the, the intent is to have someone walking the track at all hours of the night. We start about 6 o'clock at night and go to, uh, through early uh, morning hours, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. In fact, that's actually my favorite time to be walking is like 6 o'clock in the morning when the sun's coming up. Um, but another favorite aspect of that is the luminaria uh, ceremony, which is that night running about 10 o'clock when we actually shut down all the lights, the parking lot lights, and uh, light up the, the luminarias, and then we walk and uh, we read names. But it's here at, on the Roan State campus. It's actually in the faculty parking lot. It's close to regular traffic, and we set up the track, and we have tents, uh, we have food, we have all sorts of fun things, and then we start walking, and we recognize uh, the work that still needs to be done in order to uh, eliminate cancer in our lifetime. 
Staying overnight may sound tiring, but it helps connect walkers to cancer survivors. It definitely is fun and exhausting at the same time, but where we overnight makes us different and it sets us apart because we truly want people to understand um, a cancer survivor's journey as they go through treatment. And that's what uh, staying overnight represents as we, you know, start out strong and as we get weary throughout the night and then we finish strong. And that's how kind of the cancer survivor journey is. And we definitely represent that story and um, give people an opportunity to relate to that. The American Cancer Society says that U.S. men have slightly less than a one in two lifetime risk of developing cancer. For women, the risk is slightly more than one in three. The American Cancer Society is making great strides here, not only in Rome County by providing our local programs and services, uh, but also in the state of Tennessee and nationally. Um, we work to definitely help people stay well, get well, find cures, and fight back. And uh, those are our four main priorities, and that's what we do through Relay for Life efforts. This year's fundraising goal for Rome County's Relay for Life is $75,000. Well, we have several ways. You can join with the current team that's already uh, established, but we are encouraging different companies and different people to to develop their own team and uh, there's many places you can go online at um, relayforlife.org slash Roan TN and you can get information about how to register and and who you can contact. Several Roan State Mass Communication students toured the CNN Center in Atlanta in November. While there, students saw behind the scenes in one of the newsrooms, watched a demonstration of TV technology, and got to look in on sets for live broadcasts on CNN and HLN. So we just um, toured the CNN studio in Atlanta, Georgia. It was a great trip. We had a great time. Hope to do it again. Also, several students were able to put their newly acquired TV production skills to use by directing or hosting this year's Christmas parades in Kingston, Harriman, and Rockwood. All of which were broadcast on Channel 15, as well as on BBB Communications. This real-world experience helps give Roan State students an advantage when they transfer to four-year institutions to finish their degrees in mass communications. The parades are available online at tv15.org, facebook.com slash roanstate15, and youtube.com slash roanstate15. Coming up. Meet women's basketball coach so Monica Bowles. Best, you know. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Roan State saluted local veterans during a special ceremony on November 12th. We have a number of veterans who are students here, a number of veterans who are employees here. We had a number of veterans as community members who came to be a part of it, and they were so appreciative. But really the point of it, uh, as much as it was nice for them to appreciate it, we know the real purpose was to show our appreciation for what they have done, uh, all those who have served uh, to protect our, our freedoms and um, it, it's, it was just a joy just to, to get to be there and participate in it. It was a very moving service, and it's always one of, the, one of the highlights of the year for me. This will be my fifth year as head coach, but I actually started working here in 04, uh, so I guess this will be my eighth year. Uh, it seems like it's uh, flown by. Uh, when I first came here, I began uh, work as a, in the, at the help desk as a computer technician. And so I did that work, and uh, I served as the assistant coach during that time. Uh, and then after those four years, uh, the head coach job came up, and I thought, man, I really enjoy uh, doing this. I really enjoy being around basketball. Uh, and so uh, I applied for the job uh, and, and was granted the job, uh, but I needed to go and get my master's uh, so that I could teach uh, lecture courses here at Run State. But since uh, my bachelor's is actually in computer science, and so I went back to school, uh, earned my master's, and so now I get to teach in the social science division, and, and I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy both, both aspects of my day. I mean, it seems 
like I've got two different uh, roles that I play and I enjoy each of them uh, equally. You know, it seems like each one is a definite challenge and uh, it helps make my days very diverse. Uh, there's never two days that are the same, <laughs> yeah, so it's always enjoyable. I guess I was in second grade. Um, and you know, I went to this really tiny uh, school uh, in elementary school. It's called Banner Ross on Elementary, uh, and it was—I'm telling you—it was so small. Um, there was probably—I I doubt there were 100 students in the whole school, you know. Uh, and so, growing up there, it was always something to do. I always, e even as an infant, a ball was my favorite toy. You know, anything that was round, I wanted—you know—I've always seemed to be drawn towards uh, those type of objects. And uh, and then I started playing a little basketball when I was there. And then in second grade, I moved to another school, Grimsley Elementary, and that's when I really decided I loved basketball then. That's when I, uh, and I don't know that I'd ever really played any type of organized basketball until that time. And uh, one of my uh, teachers, they were like, hey, we've got this uh, tiny top basketball thing going on, and we, you know, would you be interested in playing? I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it involves a ball play. Uh, and so they got me on the team, you know, and uh, so here I went, and, uh, you know, th not thinking much about it. And then uh, they said we were going to have a game. And so they invited my mom and said, you know, your daughter's going to be playing this game uh, such and such time and uh, so mom was like okay sounds good and so she showed up and you know we had our game and my mom said the very first play of the game I took the ball and dribbled the, the whole length of the floor and I made a layup and she said she nearly fell over because she didn't know I could do anything you know uh, she just thought yeah she'd come out there and watch me chase a ball around and uh, from that day on it's just like uh, that was my first love you know I just found something I enjoyed doing I felt like I was decently good at it and I uh, just been you know striving to get better ever since. She's a good influence uh, she really hammers home the class first and then basketball. It's always uh, a good positive attitude with her and she really, it's like tough love. It's a parent-child kind of thing, but she's also our coach so she can be our friend. It's good, I like it. You know, I try to instill in them uh, you know, just characteristics about being a good teammate, you know, enjoying what you do, have a good time with it, you know, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be fun. Uh, yeah, there's parts of it that are not going to be enjoyable, but I try to teach them to find a positive. You know, there's always a positive to find in every situation, so I encourage them to do that and to become close with one another. Uh, I feel like whenever they trust each other and they love each other, that they'll play better together. You know, it's always been my experiences on my teams. Uh, when you have teammates that you get along with and that you like to be around, it's like you can perform at your best, you know, and, and I'm always on to them, and I, they'll, you know, I'm sure if you talked with them, they'd say, uh, she says this word all the time, like, be positive, you know, be positive with each other, uh, create a positive environment, because I tell them, you'll grow and thrive in a positive environment, you know, if you're always cutting each other down, if you're negative with each other, you're never going to allow yourself the ability to grow, and so, uh, to me, it's always been that. Well, I think you capture that, for lack of a better phrase, that, that, that positive intensity. You know, she is intense, but in a, in a positive way because she she so m much wants those student athletes to succeed, and not only on the court, in academics and in life. And she will push them hard to make sure that they that they succeed. And I think ultimately, I think that's that's what you want out of out of anyone who, who works with students, uh, particularly someone who, is, who is, is coaching a team, and she is, she is a great role model for us and, and for those student athletes. You know, I came here in 99, uh, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, 99. I graduated high school in May of 99, and I came here uh, and so um, and played for uh, Coach Johnny Jones and Misty Griffin. They were my coaches here, and I uh, you know, enjoyed the whole, you know, and, and to be honest with you, in high school, man, I never heard about Roan State. I didn't know what Roan State was, and I remember my first uh, game in my senior year, uh, there was a lady up in the stands, and after the game, she'd come and introduce herself to me and said she was from Roan State, and I'm like, well, where's that, you know, and uh, she started talking with me a little bit more, and it seemed like every game, I kept seeing these people popping up from the same school, you know, and um, they kept talking with me about it, so I came down here and visited, and I really liked the area, liked the school, and liked the people, and, uh, and so I just decided I'd make Roan State my home, and uh, so I came here and played two years, and you know, had a lot of success here, enjoyed it, uh, good teammates, and uh, just had a great experience, and then from here I moved on to Carson Newman, and so I played there, finished out my two years there of eligibility, and uh, went really well and earned my degree from there, and then I came back here to work, and so it's like Rome State's always been kind of home to me. You know, it was the first place that I moved to when I left home, and uh, it's like you can't get away from it, I guess. It just kind of keeps drawing you back, so it's been good to me. There are a lot of good people here. She brings that same level of commitment and intensity and, 
and and the the, the highest personal ethics uh, to everything that she does, and it's uh, it's just a joy to 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 work with her. And and I'll I'll tell you this too: if you if you get out on the court with her, um, any of the 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 noon basketball leagues, you can see she can still play. There, there are not too many people around here that can still keep up with, with, with Monty. I certainly can't. <laughs>so there is a difference between physical activity and exercise and first and foremost we need to understand that physical activity is something that we need to do every day of the week and uh, those things would be walking the dog uh, washing the car uh, raking the leaves um, playing backyard basketball or as we're talking about the holidays uh, walking through the mall and shopping exercise is going to be something that's more structured so you know you're going to go to the gym you're going to lift this much weight uh, this many times and so we're actually putting a frequency intensity and time to that now as far as exercise is concerned our main focus is going to be cardiorespiratory endurance so we're talking about our heart and our lungs and we want to make sure that we accumulate at least 30 to 60 minutes five days a week the way that we define moderate intensity exercise is 65 to 75 percent of our maximum heart rate An easy way to determine that is you're going to take 220 minus your age and then you'll multiply that times 0.65 and 0.75 and that would be your training zone we can also accumulate 20 to 60 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise three days a week. And the way we define vigorous is 75% to 90% of your maximum heart rate. So again, 220 minus your age, and then you'll multiply that times 0.75 and 0.90. Definitely, as we go into the new year, there's a couple things that we want to focus on. Number one, we want to find something that we absolutely love to do. All right, so if that's uh, walking, that's fine. If it's uh, running, if it's a yoga or if it's dancing, but we wanna make sure that it's something that we enjoy. We don't wanna just go to the gym because that's the popular thing to do. So if it's something that we enjoy and it's a time where we see it as a stress reliever, then we're more likely to stick with it. And then also, we wanna make sure that we surround ourselves around a good support system. Uh, initially, when we're starting a program, whether it's nutrition or whether it's exercise, you know, in order to be successful, we need people around us that are gonna support us, people that are gonna encourage us, and people that are going to root us on as we're trying to meet our goals. And then also, uh, you know, maybe most importantly, I think in my opinion, we want to make sure that we're doing it not for just looks, but more importantly, that we're doing it for our health. And if we focus on our health and we take care of those things and we're putting good things in our body and we're exercising for our heart and trying to prevent all the diseases, then if we're healthy on the inside, I think that it's going to show on the outside. So that should be our main focus and emphasis. As we talk about nutrition, the first thing that I tell my clients is most importantly, we want to make sure that we're eating breakfast. Okay, breakfast we've all heard is the most important meal of the day, and there's definitely validity to that because what happens is when we're at rest, you know, for most of us we're sleeping anywhere from six to ten hours, and our bodies are going to slow down. And so with that, our metabolism slow down, so we're not burning a great deal of calories. So when we wake up, I encourage everyone to eat within one hour of waking. And so what that's simply going to do, it's just going to turn our machines on. It's going to get our bodies going. It's going to get our metabolisms burning calories. And then, you know, so it's going to set the tempo for the day. And then additionally with that, we want to make sure that we're eating something that's going to sustain us. We want to eat something that's, uh, you know, high quality carbs, a little bit of fat, and a little bit of protein at each meal. And that'll allow us to keep our blood sugar at a more even keel. And so it'll help us make better choices throughout the day and keep us from overeating. Number two, we also want to make sure that we eat small, frequent meals. You know, the absolute worst thing that you can do is go all day without eating. And, you know, there's a lot of people that tell me when I'm doing nutritional counseling, you know, Sean, I can't really understand, you know, why I can't lose weight. I only eat one time a day. And so there lies the problem because, again, we're talking about our metabolism and that's that just going to slow that down. And so our bodies are very sensitive to a restriction in calories. And so if we go a couple days of not eating as much or if we restrict calories, then it's going to adapt and it is going to slow down. And so we're not going to burn calories as efficiently as we would if we're eating all the time. And so, uh, you know, basically our bodies are going to go into a starvation mode. And so basically it's going to be conserving energy 
and you know those extra pounds and fat that we're trying to lose it's not going to allow us to do that because it really doesn't know when it's going to get fed again so it's extremely important that we eat all day and it's not a coincidence that your most fit individuals especially if we start talking about our athletes or our people that eat all day long and so that's extremely important as well it's also vital that we make sure that we're drinking water especially in the winter time it's often easy you know we're not outside and we're not sweating as much and we really don't uh, see the importance of drinking the water but from a weight loss perspective our brain actually sends the same signal for thirst as it does hunger so you may find yourself going to the pantry and eating something that you shouldn't be eating or overeating uh, when in fact you're just dehydrated and actually need to be drinking water so for most individuals you need to be drinking at least 64 ounces a day and that's for sedentary individuals if you're exercising you, you definitely need to step it up from there and then also with that thought a lot of the aches and pains that we have, and headaches especially, are contributed uh, to being dehydrated. And so water is definitely important and can also you know, help us in, in keeping our stomachs full as far as drinking it before a meal so that we don't overeat. And then finally, you know, don't believe the hype. And when I say don't believe the hype, I'm talking about the so-called miracle diets out there that are going to say that they're going to help you lose uh, large amounts of weight in short periods of time and all you've got to do is give up the things that you absolutely love and enjoy. So my goal for myself and for my clients, I want to make sure that I have a sound nutritional program and an exercise program to where I can increase my quality of life. 